Hello and uh, welcome to the first interview for the Edinburgh Music Scene Live. I am today joined by singer, songwriter and multi-instrumentalist, Mr. Johnny Wallace. Johnny, hey. how's it going? Hello mate, yeah very well thank you, how are you? I'm good, I'm good. So good. For, uh, for people who don't know you, just a wee bit about yourself, like where are you from, what age did you start playing? Cool. Well, I'm from Edinburgh and I started playing when I was 15 in high school with a band called Ayakara. We split up in 2017, I believe, and I moved on to my solo project and also joined a project on Kit, Felix and the Sunset. Then I proceeded to join Vandal Palace on the kit and I've been in a multitude of projects ever since then, but I've really had my solo project as a core for the last almost three years, I think. Nice, nice. So Ayakara was your first band then? Yes, it was. Yeah, and you're on the drums for that. Yeah, good times. Yeah, that was, that was a great way to uh, break into the music scene from a very young age. And we, we stayed together for five and a half years. So it was a long running project and it was, it was a great learning curve. I learned a lot of stuff in that band that has helped me further pursue music. If I hadn't joined that band, I, I don't think I would be doing music right now if I'm being perfectly honest. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Mm -hmm. So what age were you when you uh, first started writing your own songs? <clears throat> writing my own songs that's a good question so obviously I started off on the kit so I was never a songwriter when I was younger I think I did guitar for my skill section of Duke of Edinburgh nice nice. I took guitar lessons and it was with me and my friend and my friend didn't continue neither did I but I really got a sense of enjoyment from it mm -hmm. so I bought a rusty old acoustic for like for like 60 quid it was black sunburst it looked awful <laughs> and the strings hadn't been changed in like years and I just kind of sat it was by my computer in my house when I was younger and I just kind of sat and played it and then I would say one of the first songs that I wrote was actually Cherry that oh, yeah. was one of the that was one of the first tunes that I I wrote to completion on the guitar mm -hmm. and that was when I was about maybe 19 i think yeah. i wrote that when i was 19 yeah belt over chin belt over chin oh thank you <laughs> so but brings me on to my next question like when you're writing your your songs who who influences you as a musician and who influences you when you're with your writing nice so with my writing i was told by my producer that he thinks i'm subconsciously influenced by my chemical romance and I would probably agree with that because they were the first two albums I ever owned. Yeah. Um, yeah. But it's it's kind of difficult. I always try to write like Alex Turner, but it never happens. <laughs> so I think I just kind of get caught in like this weird middle ground between like just normal, normal lyrical stuff and Alex Turner stuff. And my style is like in the middle ground. I'm trying to be Alex Turner said, but it just doesn't happen because no one can rival that guy's uh, lyrics. They're absolutely genius. And I would say for, for, uh, for my chord progressions and stuff, I really, I really like to stick to the standards, you know, one, five minor six, four kind of thing and staying in the box. Uh, mm -hmm. I think that actually fifties music has really influenced a lot of my chord progressions um, right. you know the the one six minor four five mm -hmm. I've, I love that chord progression it's in so many it's in so many 50s tunes yeah, yeah. and I think I think that's kind of creeped into my songwriting a little bit but I can never really pin down one main influence for my writing I think I just take from a lot of places well that's a, no, that's a good thing that's a good good mix of uh, influences there as well yeah yeah so right this is a not the nicest one but obviously the okay. pandemic's been a big big thing so how have you found being a, a musician during during all COVID? Right. <laughs> awful absolutely <laughs> awful it's yeah. it's been strange uh practicing 
and songwriting yeah. when you've got nothing to practice for. Mm -hmm. It's so difficult to keep yourself motivated to practice when you don't have any gigs, you don't have any band rehearsals, you've you've got nothing to drive you to to do your practice. Yeah, yeah. So it's been really tricky. As you know, I was doing the live streams throughout lockdown, which was good, but everything gets old. And yeah. with the live streams, every stream, less and less viewers. And for me personally, I I kind of really enjoyed it up until the end. Yeah. And then you kind of get demotivated when the viewers start dropping. Mm -hmm. You know, you make the effort to you know, learn new tunes, then you go on and you see there's only a handful of people watching you for two hours. Yeah. So I just thought, you know, maybe the time had, the time had passed and uh, the novelty had worn off and everyone was kind of like, as you know, there were so many live streams on Facebook. Everyone, so many. Was doing them, eh? like, yeah, it became such a saturated market for that short amount of time. But I didn't write one song in lockdown. Did you not? No. no. Nope. Because, well, that's a lie. Actually, <laughs> I did. I did write one, which I recorded last. Uh, I recorded on Thursday in Glasgow, so that's coming out soon. Uh -huh. Well, a couple of months. Um, but I write my songs from experiences that I have mm -hmm. in life. The Cupid Stunt CP really shows that off, and. I wasn't writing about anything. Like I wasn't experiencing anything. Yeah. And I was a firm believer that no one wants to hear a song about lockdown because everyone is living lockdown. Who wants yeah. like, I don't know, music is escapism for so many people. So yeah. if you're just writing about the current situation that you're in, it's completely pointless. Mm -hmm. I, I heard a few lockdown tunes and if I'm being brutally honest, I would listen to them and turn them off almost instantly. Because yeah. I was like, I don't need to hear about what's happening because it's happening right now. Yeah. And, you know, I was trying to use music as a way to escape what was happening. Mm -hmm. yeah, but I did struggle with songwriting. So being a musician was real tough. Obviously, <clears throat> the livelihood and the enjoyment of playing live uh, got stripped away from us all, which was pretty pissed. But, you know, we, we rolled with the punches and everything's coming back, which is, which is good news. Mm -hmm. so yeah well what's the what's the plans for after covid you got any gigs lined oh, up busy 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 yeah. yeah i've uh i've got a couple of projects on the go just now so i'm just trying to balance obviously as i just said i've got that release yeah coming probably if it's may J july i would say for that release yeah. i've got the wedding band promo shoot booked in june an extended rehearsal a couple of days before that for a new uh, brass and battery project uh, that my friend's running, which will be class. I've joined Lachlan, who's the guitarist from Vandal Palace. He's got his solo project going on, so I'm on kit for him. And I've got a few side projects that are just for a bit of fun, you know, yeah. just to, to kind of fill the time. So I'm very busy and I've never been happier to, you know, if I'm going to be busy with anything, it's music. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. That's what I want, yeah. That's, that's good. So, this is a, might be a hard one to answer, but what song mm. or EP of your own are you most most proud of? Most proud of. So, that is a difficult question. I would say it's tricky because Cupid Stunts, mm. I put in a lot of work in the recording and the songwriting but no work marketing it. Okay. it, was, it that's why it fell so flat, because I just wanted to release it. I didn't want to bother about getting press releases, all that stuff done. I Talk Too Much was the opposite. I, I enjoyed the, it was a song that was very personal and I enjoyed mm. the process of making the EP, but I put so much work into the PR and the press release and stuff. It became like a, a job like a business for a month yeah yeah i would i would say <clears throat> the if i had to choose one song that i'm most proud of um technicality wise it would be i talk too much mm -hmm. but if a song that i personally like to listen to it would yeah. be aftershave yeah yeah 
I mean, the whole Cupid Stunts EP is is my favorite body of work. Mm -hmm. well, I suppose yeah, I was, with, with the way that you write as well, it's so like like you're saying, like true to to you and mm -hmm. your experiences must be like it's not an easy thing to just choose. Yeah, like because every as you know, as you'll know, you know, every song has meaning to the the writer. Mm -hmm. You know, a songwriter never writes a song just for like just for no reason it always has a, a meaning to them so it's a difficult question but yeah i'd say i'm most proud of the cupid stunts ep mm -hmm. no, well, it's, had a, to put... it's a good strong ep like i'd oh, all right thanks. anyone watching this to go and listen to it <laughs> you know, like. but, thanks, uh, mate. so what's the what's the goal what's the overall goal for your music career what what do you want to to be happy man yeah yeah, hundred percent. I've really let go of the obsession of trying to make it. Like, I'm, I'm not, I'm not bothered. Like, I, I was playing a pub gig with one of my pals, Arnie, and he was giving me a lift home, and he said to me, "So, Johnny, when have you like? He's a bit older than me, and mm -hmm. um, I think he's like in his forties. Uh, he just does it for a bit of fun." And he said to me, so Johnny, when have you like made it? Is it when you reach like this number of streams or when you like reach this many followers? Yeah. And my natural reply to him was, I've already made it. Mm -hmm. Like I do music for a living. Yeah. You know what I mean? It doesn't matter how much money I make. Mm -hmm. If I can do music as a living, then I've made it. That's, that, that's the goal. The goal is for me to make music my livelihood and just even if it's not my livelihood, just always have it as a part of my life, the main the main part of my life. So that's the goal. I mean, don't get me wrong, headline in Glasgow would be decent, but Aye. I'm not I'm not uh, I'm not really like if that doesn't happen, then I'm still gonna be very happy. I think a lot of people set targets that personally I I, I don't really know. I mean, I understand why, but in some in one of the projects that I was in, um the the leader of the project was saying oh uh this next song you know we need to get it to 10k streams mm -hmm. and i just thought to myself what happens at 10k yeah not nothing nothing happens at 10k mm -hmm. you get to 10k and then you're like cool that song's at 10k yeah and it, it's kind of a it's kind of a meaningless target i'm happy if one person listens to a song that i release yeah like some of the songs that have really fallen flat and don't have a lot of streams, someone's come up to me and said that that song means a lot to them, and that's that's all I can really, that's all I can really ask for. But what I've what I've been thinking recently is I'm just doing this for me now. Yeah, I'm doing it because I enjoy it, and it's a cathartic way to get emotions out. Okay. So that's where I am at the moment. So my goal is just to be happy and always focus on where I'm at. That's, I think that's a very, very good way to look at things. A very healthy mindset as well. Yeah. yeah like, totally. Well, yeah. If you're if you're happy, then that's 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 the goal, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. I think I think the reason that Ayakara broke up was because we started focusing too much on what we wanted mm -hmm. rather than where we were. Yeah. It's the it's the Dalai Lama adage is a uh, don't. Um, don't focus on having what you want focus on wanting what you have so you know when we were playing london mm -hmm. we were playing london yeah, yeah. A band from edinburgh you know going down playing london but all we were thinking was oh why aren't we headlining why isn't the show sold out why are we not in a bigger venue and we just completely overlooked the fact that we'd played in london you know one of the biggest musical cities in the uk yeah arguably maybe the biggest we just overlooked that because we were always looking for the next step and it was happening in every, in every small aspect of the band. Uh, yeah. It was, you know, we'd play a song and we'd absolutely smash it in the practice room and we'd be like, I could be tighter. Yeah. Every time, instead of just enjoying the moment, we we're always looking ahead. Mm -hmm. So I think it's always good to appreciate where you're at. And if you can be happy wherever you are, I think that's the key to having a, a long music career. Yeah. Yeah very wise words there you're um, welcome <laughs> so <laughs> where where can people find your music and your all your all your stuff everywhere man everywhere, everywhere. yeah i go through distro kids um who 
I, I, I think you do too, right? Uh, yeah, or Amy Vans, maybe. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think all of the distributors are really good at, you know, they, they get your songs everywhere. Yeah. And every time I get a release, they've added an, another store on. So Amazon Music, Apple Music, iTunes, Spotify, Deezer, all the, all the big streaming services, and YouTube as well. Um, that topic thing. I don't know how that works, but I also have my own YouTube channel. So please check that out before you go on the topic. That would be great. <laughs> subscribe. Go and subscribe. And go sub, man. Hi, definitely. Well, Johnny, thank you very much for spending this time with us. And uh, you're welcome. Thanks for having me on, man. Good luck with the rest of the of the music, and hopefully, we'll see you at a gig soon. Oh yeah, you will, man. Don't worry about that. All right. Cheers, bro. Nice one. Cheers, Sean. <laughs>